Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where today is a day we've been looking forward to a first look at the car just over there, the new Lamborghini Revuelto. We're here at Centro Stile at Lamborghini's HQ in Santa Gata Bolognese, and this is going to be a full discovery of the car we've been waiting to see, a car that really began with its spiritual ancestors, the Countach, the Diablo, the Murcia Lago, and most recently, the Aventador. But come on through, because I know this is what we're all here today to come and take a look at, to pull the covers back, to run through this car in detail. Take a look then at the brand new Lamborghini Revuelto. Take a look at this. Over 1,000 horsepower hybrid with three electric motors supporting the 6.5 litre V12. Design completely reworked. Lots of things to take a look at throughout. Aerodynamics at play. Incredible performance figures. We're going to be running through the completely reworked interior. Just look at this car. Revuelto, again, named after a Spanish fighting bull. A bull that clearly meant business when you just take a first glimpse at this. So here here we are at Centro Stile. Let's dive in, go for a walk around, run around the car, check out some of the technical demonstrations they have here as well, and some of the interior specification options and other things that you can choose for this. Today I've been looking forward to. Let's crack on. Where do we begin with the Revuelto? There is so much to show you about this car. Of course, many years in the making. Many have been waiting for the successor to the Lamborghini Aventador. Such a popular car over its decade in existence. This is the next generation. This year happens to be Lamborghini's 60th anniversary year, having been founded back in 1963. And this is quite the way to celebrate. I want to walk you through all of the design, the aerodynamics, everything that's going on here. Many of the different options, body panels made from carbon fiber, the practicality of the car as well. In fact, on the interior, there's a lot to show you there as well that's been completely redone. In fact, the entire car is all new and come and take a look at the back of this. Quite the departure from the norm, the styling, the shapes. Look at the way the exhaust tailpipes sit high and proud right in the center. The entire car is designed as a concept like a spaceship. In fact, the V12 is exposed the top of the engine completely exposed on the exterior, surrounded, as you can see, by exposed carbon fibre as well. We need to run through all of this because it's a technology tour de force as well. A new gearbox, an eight-speed dual-clutch gearbox, a full electric driving mode, thanks to the two electric motors at the front and the single electric motor attached to the V12 as well. You can actually drive it in all-wheel drive under electric power with also offering over a thousand horsepower. Take that in, a thousand horsepower as well, depending on the different drive modes and talking driving modes, there are 13 different driving modes available in the Revuelto. So I want to break this down and go through things in stages. Let's start with a full exterior run through in detail of everything we're looking at. Like the Aventador that came before it, the launch color of choice is orange. This is a new color though, Arancio Apodis. In fact, over 400 colors are available through Ad Personum for the Revuelto. But let's start right at the front. You'll notice the shapes that are going on here, giving it quite a compact appearance despite despite being a touch longer than the previous model. In fact, the entirety of the bonnet is carbon fiber and look at everything going on here, particularly the distinct eyes that you have through these Ypsilon shapes, things that you'll see as a theme that runs throughout the design of the car. In fact, the largest Ypsilon that Lamborghini have used on a car, similar in ways to that as we've seen on the Cyan and the Hurricane Technica. You'll spot the headlights almost sit underneath those eyebrows, eyelids over the top of them, as well as having all of the latest ADAS systems. You can have your radar, your adaptive cruise control, your parking sensors, the surround cameras, in fact, tucked in just underneath the nose above the plate that you have down there. You can actually opt to have parts like this, for example, in body color, should you wish. And then of course, all the different liveries and things that will come on top of that. As we come around towards the side of the car, you can see here the car with the 21 inch wheels at the front, 22 inch wheels at the rear, an inch both front and rear above from standard, the forged wheels that we have here with a lighter weight derivative available as well. If we come through, this aero fin can be opted in carbon fiber. You can see aerodynamics are a big part of this and the air management that runs through the car, more Ypsilon shapes around the cooling that you have through the intakes here. In fact, the buttresses you'll spot are floating, those wings that you have over the rear decks. And also down here, if you have the optional exterior carbon fiber side blade, you have the Revuelto piece just there. Otherwise it would sit slightly differently without this additional fin up over the top. Carbon ceramics 
are standard, of course, on the car as well. And we come around again to seeing these shapes, the tail light Y shape that you have running through towards those jet fighter inspired exhaust tailpipes at the back, sitting beneath this active spoiler, which raises to three different positions, depending on the driving settings and how you have it controlled from inside and a gigantic diffuser that runs all the way underneath the car, a fully functional diffuser that runs throughout the entirety, it feels, of the underside. But again, the cameras, for example, integrated there into the bumper. If we come back around towards the side, you spot the 360 cameras that you have underneath the door mirrors. A lot of technology being discreetly integrated into this new look next generation car. Now, one particularly interesting thing you spot with the design is that the A pillars over the top of the car are actually part of the new carbon mono fuselage, which we're going to be taking a look at in a moment. But effectively, this is your carbon tub that encompasses the occupants within. We've got a lot of the interior to dive into in a moment as well. Entry to Revuelto, the button for the doors just underneath the white shape here of course Lamborghini doors opening outwards but an all new interior to take a look through and a lot to take in when it comes to this as well but starting right away from the carbon tub you'll notice the much narrower side rocker significantly easier access than ever found before in fact part of that now on the underside of the door sill itself and you can see the areas of forged carbon even underneath the seat that are left exposed talking seats a new seat as well found in here and in fact three displays, the passenger display, infotainment, and the driver dashboard that we can run through as well. The battery is housed in this central tunnel, a connection, if you will, between the front and the rear of the car, even storage space, in fact, found right behind these seats, more headroom than before as well. The car actually sits 24 millimeters taller than the Aventador, but 26 millimeters increased headroom found within. Lots of details and controls that you see on the steering wheel as well, in terms of the driving modes, the EV settings, and plenty more to talk you through in just a moment but this is really completely all new come and take a look at this the technical side of things fascinating to discover underneath the skin of course you can see the electric components we're going to run through the motors and the v12 that you find at the back but also this new carbon mono fuselage now what's fascinating about this is up front the entire crash structure parts that you see here are all carbon fiber part of the tub of the car itself that both helps with stiffness it's 25 percent stiffer than before but also lightness 25 percent lighter now one of the big things with this car is to save weight of course adding the weight of the batteries and the electric motors needs to be compensated wherever else it can possibly be done so up front we have two electric motors 140 kilowatts of power in total but also somehow the storage space here will also still fit two trolley bags you can still fit a significant amount of luggage which is really quite impressive if you come on through have a look here right in the center this is where we have the battery pack just here in the very middle, the 3.8 kilowatt hour battery, 108 cell. This will allow you to drive on full electric power with all wheel drive for a 10 kilometer, six mile range in total to be stealthy through the city, shall we say. And of course you can also see the full carbon fiber appearance of this throughout, which is just remarkable. Then behind that, we have the combustion engine. In fact, changed heavily, of course, from before. It's been rotated 180 degrees, six and a half liters, naturally aspirated, 825 CV. That's your metric horsepower from the combustion engine, supported as well by an additional electric motor. And cru crucially, back here, a new eight-speed gearbox. The gearbox is actually mounted transversely, 90 degrees rotated in to help with packaging and keeping it as compact as possible within the car at the very back of it but obviously this gives us a new approach to being able to understand what's going on underneath the skin let's talk wheels and tires as you can see here incredibly wide 355 wide rear, rear tires that we have bridgestone tire developed for the car and one of the wheel designs which can be finished in various different color schemes and liveries but getting to learn where some of the electrical cabling goes. For example, the battery acts as a replacement for parts of the wiring harness, because of course they work directly through the electrics to save some weight with all of that going on within. Back over to the car. I'm going to take a seat inside to show you through a little bit more of what we have in here. The new steering wheel, the new displays, you can see lots of carbon fiber. In fact, a lot of the carbon fiber in here is actually standard. For example, this Y shape that you have over the top of the air vents, the carbon running over towards the passenger side, the inlays in the doors that you have available as well. In fact, there are only a select few number of options, the shift paddles, the steering column itself, the top and the bottom of the steering wheel, and talking steering wheel, have a look at what we've got here. On the left, you have 
have your main driving modes. So there's a new Cheetah driving mode, which is for City. Then you have your Strada, Corsa or Sport and then Corsa through this. A press in the centre to give you the maximum effect. Over on this side, your EV driving modes. If you'd like to go between full electric, hybrid and recharging, full electric at a quick press of the button. Down below, this is where you have your damper settings to again shuffle between various with a press for the lift system. And finally, the last toggle on this side is actually for your wing position if you'd like to manually raise that to the top. Now, interestingly, there are actually buttons on the back of the steering wheel. For example, your media controls on one side and on the other side for the widgets on the display. There's a full D-pad with a press in the very center as well. So lots of control that you have available right at your fingertips with the shift paddles mounted to the column just behind, cut out, again, saving some weight and looking the part in the process. On the door, you have these blades hanging down. The electric button release is just here. You have your additional mirrors and window controls tucked in there. Your light controls are found as they usually are in a Lamborghini just down to the side. But this new system is very clever and we're going to be able to go over to a demo of it and how you can swipe widgets over to the passenger display or the driver's display depending what you want and put your favourite links for example onto the very home page. But unlike previous cars we've got storage areas. We've got a storage pad here. We've actually got one just behind as well. If you can just see back here a storage pad space as well with the typical flap to start the car up, the theatre that comes with that, everything being Lamborghini's own, no usage of parts on the visual or surface of the car that have come from elsewhere, but with really keeping this to a minimum. The key is of course the one that we've seen on the Urus Performante, but change to have no chrome. You'll notice there's no visual chrome left anywhere in here, all replaced with carbon fibre or other materials. Very much focused on the quality of the inside of the car and you feel that with different options for the seat inlays and the stitching depending on the specifics of the type of seat that the customers choose on their respective cars. But massively more space than before. In fact, it's eight centimetres more foot space 80 millimetres for much taller occupants and much more headspace as well, thanks also in part to the double bubble nature of the roof that runs over the top of you. I feel like I've got much more space in here than I'm familiar with, but still from this seating position, the glass just runs endlessly out over in front, out towards the front of the car. Very hard to know exactly where that leads. But let me go and show you the demo of these systems. This is a great breakdown then. You can see the digital display for the cockpit and how you actually have the representation presentations of those toggles brought onto that display itself with different modes and different presentation styles depending how you've got it set up. Here of course we have Corsa and we have Performance on the EV setting and you can see it gives you that horizontal rev counter all controlled through these toggles that you have up here with the additional controls as well, the indicators over to the left and the wipers over to the right as we've seen on the Hurricane unlike those that you saw on the Aventador before. In the centre screen this is what you would see right in the central console. This is where again you have the information, your regular radio, media controls for the vehicle, as you can see running through the demo mode here just to show us exactly what this looks like and the style of it all, your climate controls up to the top. You'd tap on that and be able to cycle through. Well, we've got it just here. I can show you the regular city driving mode if you're in hybrid, effectively the default settings, if you will, the opportunity to drive completely silently, completely electrically, city centre driving, that kind of thing with that central rev counter and the widgets that I mentioned you control from the back of the steering wheel on the left hand side to run through there with a chart here for your electric power and those kind of things. We've gone up into strata mode as you can see the colours and different themes change as it makes its way through. This is a great demonstration to be able to get a quick understanding for how this works before heading out on the road in one of these as well as also having that optional carbon fibre for the top and for these bottom sections that I mentioned that you can have for the steering wheel as well. When it comes to options, of course, there are a lot of things to choose from, as you can see from the samples that are dotted all around. Let's start with the wheels. We have here the 21 and 22 inch forged wheel, the larger wheel that's available with various different finishes. You also have the very lightweight 20, 21 inch wheel, as you can see here, again, finished in different color combinations with a third standard wheel option that we don't have right here at the moment. We've then got different seat inlays. Now, depending on the colours you choose and the theme that you choose, the family that you choose, if you will, you have quite a different theme and style to the seat. So this is the Classica, the classic look. Then you have the Sportiva, the sporty look, and you have the contrast look as well here. So of course, lots of different options that you can go for when it comes to these things, but totally different styles and themes. I didn't mention this before, but a complete breakdown of the gearbox and the motor that you have at the rear. Always, again, fascinating to see inside 
inside it to see what we're looking at, to understand a touch more about how all of this works, keeping it as compact as possible and obviously mounting it 90 degrees across the car as well. When it comes to paint colours initially, the pre-sale cars, if you will, were selected from the various different shades. We can see here the new Arancio Apodis that's been launched, Verde Viper, as we saw on the Urus Performante, Giallo, just Giallo as it happens, links back to the Countach as well. We've got, I think, from the Sterato Verde Turbine, Nero Nemesis, the Saturn Black, Grigio Acheso, and then Viola Pacifier, a colour we know very well, Bianco Siderale, which comes from the Countach, and Blue Okeanos, I suppose it is, that very dark navy blue, of course, lots of different interior trims and different things that they're showing here. Satin carbon fibre or glossy carbon fibre, again, an option for the exterior of the car, and that has an impact on a few other areas as well, which I'll pop over to show you a little bit more about. But there are your leather samples, different colours for the interior and some of the brake calipers. Now, this is a very quick first look for me. Before entering the room earlier, I knew nothing about this new car. There is a ton to take in with it, and I can't wait to learn a whole lot more about it as well. It's the design that is outrageous in so many ways, as a Lamborghini should be. It's bold, it's striking, and it's the way that it tapers both at the rear and also at the front of the car to give you this super spaceship-like feeling from it. Carbon panels up the top, for example, the spoiler, the boot lid, the wings, obviously the roof of the car, lots of carbon fibre, the exposed carbon that we have here around the diffuser, the name of the car, I should technically pronounce it the correct way, which I believe in theory is Revuelto, Revuelto, along those lines, apologies for my butchering of the language, we'll learn more as time goes by, but this car, obviously, with the contrast, with all of the different elements, and if you've ordered the gloss carbon or the satin carbon, it changes some of the other parts that you see. For example, right around here at the front, if you have the gloss carbon, this is gloss black. If you have satin carbon, these parts by default are all presented in satin black instead, but this is really the step forward that this car has been waiting for, this line, I should say, has been waiting for. Obviously, Lamborghini and V12s have been synonymous as their flagship machine, and to maintain a V12 in this era is something we should all be very, very happy about. It is great to see. We've heard so many rumours. We've seen so many spy shots. But this is the car. This is the new car in all of its glory, the start of the journey towards, well, customer cars will arrive later in this year, Q4 of the launch year, 2023. And those cars that are produced in this year, in fact, have a specific plaque just inside here to commemorate the 60th anniversary. As you can see, 60 anniversario presented just there with the bullhorns on the top. Dealer cars will arrive a few months prior. Those are cars which, of course, we'll be able to see at the dealerships, at showrooms, to really get a feel for what this is all about. So today, that's been a first look at the brand new Lamborghini Revuelto. What a car, what an opportunity. A huge thanks to everyone for making it possible to take a look at this and to be able to share it with you. Plenty more, of course, to come very soon, but that's it for this time. Thanks for watching as always, and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.